So well, thank you, John. Yeah, I'm, I'm always impressed by the, how this, this movement keeps growing. And I, I don't want to scare you, but, but this is starting to turn into a Woodstock for our side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't drink the brown acid. The brown acid is bad. <laughs> Joke for hippies, you probably don't get it. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's great to see everybody out here. And if there's one message I want to get across, is that this movement is real. This grassroots movement is very, very real. But I want to put out a couple bits of warning. The biggest warning I hope you'll take to your grave is that principles count. Politicians come, politicians go, but principles stay forever. And it is those principles that we need to be wed to. So, right now there's a, there's a lot of anger about the nationalization of our economy, as there should be. Let's be careful. I have a feeling this is going to become an anti-democratic movement. It's not. This is a pro-liberty movement. And I'm worried. I'm worried that we might be perceived as R's instead of D's. That's not the spectrum. The spectrum is not from Republican to Democrat. It's not from liberal to conservative. It's from liberty to command and control. It is from capitalism to socialism. Let's not forget that it was, it was Republicans that queued up this ball, teed up this ball for Obama to swing away at it. Here in Colorado, we had Republicans that endorsed referendum C and D, which now passed, cost billions of dollars, and what a surprise, now we're in a budget shortfall because it jacked up our budget. This happened not because of Democrats, it's because of conservatives who refused to stand up. I look at Washington, D.C. What happened during those glorious years when we prayed, if only we could get a Republican president, if only we had a Republican Congress and match with a Republican Senate, then things would change. They changed. They changed. What happened? Well, did we get our universal vouchers? Did we get our huge tax cuts? We got some nice ones, that's good. But we got bigger spending than ever before. In fact, under George Bush, Federal government spending outside of the military grew faster than when Lyndon Baines Johnson was president. That happened under Republicans' watch. What else happened? We lost our First Amendment voice under McCain-Feingold, and Republicans passed it through and signed it into law. We added a screaming amount of earmarks that we've never seen before. We've seen pork-ridden transportation bills, farm bills. We saw bridges to nowhere under Republicans. We saw the largest increase in government spending up to that point with the Medicare bill. We saw then the TARP bill, a bailout of private companies, promised to go only to financial institutions, and then President Bush, before he left, gave it to car companies, when Congress said not to do so. If he didn't do that, Chrysler and GM would have gone broke, would have reorganized by now, instead of waiting six months to get even more money. That happened under a Republican. Let's think about the energy bill, for instance. Do you know the story of Thomas Edison? What a great American. He brought light to the world. He spent time developing the light bulb. The light bulb, the incandescent light bulb. He tried literally 10,000 different filaments. He tried horse hair. He tried different wire. He tried cotton. He tried human hair. Every time he failed, people asked him, What's it like to be such a failure? You failed 10,000 times. To which he said, like an American, I never failed. I successfully eliminated 10,000 things that didn't work. <laughs> and with that incandescent bulb, he brought light to the world. And for night owls like me, we wouldn't be able to survive if not for Thomas Edison. And that great invention, the incandescent light bulb. President George Bush signed a bill that made that light bulb contraband. In two years, you won't be able to buy an incandescent bulb. Let's, not rem let's remember, as this movement grows, there'll be those who will try to capture it and use it for their political cause. By the way, I think that's good. But what it means is they're going to put politicians first. Let's remember, we put principles first. I'm happy to endorse the Republican Party. I want them to be Republicans again. But until they atone for what they've done, we have to evolve, we have to be very skeptical. This time, we're not going to get fooled ever again. How, how do we 
know when we're a successful movement? How will we know when these Woodstocks that take place really turn into something? Well, I'll tell you first, they won't take us seriously. That's step number one. The media won't show up in mass, and thanks to Channel 4 for being here, but where is the rest? Then, the yeah. best thing that'll happen, yeah. they will begin to ridicule us. Yeah. Get ready for more teabagging jokes. And then, they will get angry. Very, very angry. The insults will fly, and when that happens, we know this liberty movement from the ground up is taking off like a rocket and cannot stop. I look back at what's going on today. Thomas Jefferson wrote an incredible document, Declaration of Independence. And we always hear the beginning, we always hear the end, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. We never really spend much time in that middle part, all that good stuff of what he's complaining about. And he submits to a candid world those grievances of King George. Do any of these grievances hold today? Yes. Have you had to go to the DMV? Have you ever had to go register your business? Have you gone to get building permits and had to wait in places far off? Well, back then he said, he, King George, has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, distant from the depository of their public record for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. <laughs> wait a second. That's today. DMV. Here's my favorite grievance. Remember, this was in 1776. He, the government, has erected a multitude of new offices, sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. Have you seen the alphabet soup that we are now responsible for and how that is going to grow in the next four years? And the top one. This one goes directly to Bill Ritter. He has been imposing taxes upon us without our consent. This battle doesn't end. This battle continues and continues and continues. And I know how difficult it is. You come home after a hard day, you deal with your kids, you deal with your family, you deal with the, all the things you need to do, and then you realize after that, if you're going to fight this, you have to reach down for more money, more energy, more time, more t energy away from your kids. And you think, that's not fair. And then the final insult happens when you think about it and you realize, not only do I have to fight these people, but I have to work harder now to raise more tax money to feed the enemy who's fighting against my family. It's enough to demoralize you. But I remind you, I remind you, there have been plenty of times in American history from that first revolution to the guys who stormed Normandy, to the people who put together this country and fought. The sacrifices we make are small, but we must, must make them. That's why I'm so proud to spend time with you. Let me, let me end this on just a couple of quick thoughts. The people who are pushing socialism are not bad people. They're emotional people. They feel what's going on is right. I, I remember watching a, a seeing a a photograph from the 1917, 1917 Tour de France. This is a bike race, for those of you who have never seen a bicycle. It's a bike race, and they're about ready to hit the big hill. And you know what each and every bicyclist is doing? Smoking a cigarette. <laughs> each and every one. Why? Because back then it was thought, by smoking a cigarette, it opens up your lungs and prepares you for the big hill ahead so you can win the race. That was the common thinking. It was emotional. And people believed it. And today, we believe what's emotion. One of my favorite founding fathers, Sam Adams, said that mankind are generally governed more by their feelings than by reason. Well, we are here as reason. But we have to remember, we're going to sell our cause through emotion. We must get to our friends. We must get to our family and spark this fire on the grassroots level for liberty, for principle. And let me end with this one. My favorite from, from Sam Adams. It does not take majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. Happy Fourth of July.